We've been looking this morning at Iraq's potential in a very uncertain world. It's uncertain politically in the whole region, of course. The whole energy world is in a state of uncertainty. Uh, there are rocketing prices which are causing huge suffering here in Britain and in every other country in Europe. Only a few have escaped and this is much more serious for international affairs than I think is often appreciated. Why? Because energy comes into everything. Reliable, affordable, clean energy uh, is like oxygen. You have to have it otherwise the entire industrial progress of the world comes to a halt and when that comes to a halt it creates political instability and when that happens governments fall, people suffer and terrible damages result. So this is very important and I hope that uh, Iraq will manage to get through some of the challenges it's facing now. I have to say sadly looking back and trying to look forward into the digital revolutionized world that progress hasn't been all that good. Terrible errors have been made uh, short-termism has prevailed over longer-term decisions and therefore our path to a low-carbon world, which we all want to see, a green and pleasant, has been made much more difficult by these errors and by supply and demand getting out of balance. When that happens, as any economist will tell you, terrible things happen to prices. If supply collapses and demand goes on, you get impossible prices, huge market instability. If demand collapses as a result of that and supply goes on, you get terrible revolutions in the countries that produce and are relying on income from oil and gas and worse. So it's, it's balance is the absolutely guiding principle. I think over the next 30 years, the demand for oil will peak. In fact, it will peak sooner and decline. I think the demand for all fossil fuels will decline, but gradually. And if, if people get these conditions out of line, as is happening now this moment while I'm talking to you, uh, then you will get terrific suffering, terrific instability and real dangers. And of course, the Russian contribution to all this can't be ignored. If they cut off their sales of three million barrels a day of oil to Central Europe, to Europe, and they cut off all their gas pipelines, uh, they'll sell the oil to the Chinese at a discount, but the gas they won't be able to sell and that will create a very sharp disruption in all these countries, can be met. There is enough oil around if it's um, invested and produced. There is plenty of gas around, which frozen or by pipeline. But it's got to be organized, it's got to be distributed, there's got to be storage, it's got to be balanced, there's got to be sensible marketing. And if you don't get that, you get the sort of problems we have now, which are frankly are intolerable. You cannot ask half the households of my country, United Kingdom, to suddenly absorb first 700 pounds more in their energy bill, then, then we're threatened with another 900. This is a real heat or eat dilemma at its most acute. People don't know how much money to put into their meter because it runs out immediately. They don't know whether how to keep their children warm or whether to feed them or keep them warm. This is absolutely intolerable. Uh, it's intolerable in in a poorer part of the world, it's intolerable in our supposedly rich part of the world and it cannot go on like this. So short-term solutions are needed and they may be apparently in conflict with longer-term decarbonisation. In fact, they're not. If we don't get short-term solutions to these roaring prices through, I believe, more supply of oil and gas being pumped in the world, if we don't get those, we'll never get to decarbonisation and climate change combating efficiently in the future, which will leave us all a lot hotter in the summer than we can breathe in and a lot colder in the winter than we can survive. And that applies to my country, United Kingdom, just as much as to poorer countries nearer the equator. I, I want Iraq to prosper again. It's a big country. It's got enormous talent, highly educated professional class, of course, as we, everyone knows, um, and a great history behind it from the moment it was created out of the ashes of the First World War. But things are not going well. There is, there is tremendous political tensions in that country still. And the sort of rivalries which are in their extreme form, as we saw with um, Islamic ISIL or ISIS as it's called, uh, can burst out into horrific violence. So I hope that they can stabilize their country. Uh, I hope that the economics of energy I've been describing don't undermine them. 
If they're going to rely less on oil, it must be gradual and they've got to develop alternative industries. I have high hopes for Iraq, I always did, but it's, it's tough going, tough going.